Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you've ever wanted to run macOS on your PC or laptop but thought it was too complicated, don't worry I've got you covered. In this video, I'll walk you through a simple guide to install Hackintosh on any PC or laptop. And the best part is, I recently found a super simple solution that makes it possible to install any version of macOS, including the latest macOS Sequoia, and even the new macOS Tahoe. No more confusing steps, no endless searching across forums this method will save you time, reduce errors, and make Hackintosh set up much easier for beginners. Whether you want to try macOS for work, app, development, video editing, or just the Apple ecosystem, this guide will help you get there. Okay, let's dive into it. First, before we start the installation, you'll need to prepare a few important tools. Belena Etcher, Minitool Partition Wizard, Mac OS Installer File, and the last, OpenCore Simplify. For your convenience, I'll leave all the download links for these tools in the video description below. Now that you've got all the tools ready, the next step is to create a bootable USB installer. Install and open Belena Etcher on your computer. Then select the Mac OS installer file you want to install. Remember, this method fully supports the latest Mac OS Sequoia and also the beta of Mac OS Tahoe. In this video, I'll be installing the stable Mac OS Sequoia as an example. But if you want to try Tahoe, the process is exactly the same. Next, choose your USB drive as the target device. Finally, click Flash to begin creating your bootable Mac OS installer. This step may take a while depending on your USB speed, so be patient and let it finish. Now that your USB installer is ready, the next step is to set up OpenCore Simplify so we can generate the EFI folder for your Hackintosh. Open the OpenCore Simplify folder that you downloaded earlier. Inside, you'll find a bat file. Go ahead and run that file. Make sure your computer is connected to the internet, because the tool will need to download some required files during the first run. Once the terminal opens, select Option 1. His option will automatically export your hardware specifications into OpenCore. By doing this, OpenCore Simplify will know your CPU and other components, so later, it can build an EFI folder that matches your hardware. Then type E to export the hardware component to OpenCore. OpenCore Simplify will automatically download a hardware sniffer tool. This tool scans your PC or laptop and collects all the important hardware specifications for Hackintosh. Once the scan is complete, OpenCore will generate and export a hardware list specifically for your Hackintosh setup. The best part? It will also give you a recommendation of which macOS version is suitable for your computer. In my case, OpenCore detected that my hardware can support up to macOS Tahoe Beta. Now press Enter to continue. At this point, you'll be asked to choose which macOS version you want to install. Since my PC supports macOS Tahoe, I could go with that. But for this tutorial, I'll install the stable version of macOS Sequoia. So, I'll type 24 and then press Enter to confirm. Once you've selected the macOS version, the next step is to generate your SM BIOS. Type 5 in the menu to begin the SM BIOS process. By default, OpenCore Simplify will automatically select a Make SM BIOS model that best matches your hardware. If you want to explore other options, type A to see the full list of supported Mac models. Models shown in green are compatible with your hardware. Models in gray mean they are not supported and should be avoided. In my case, I'll keep the default green option that OpenCore has already selected for me. Once you're done, type B to go back to the previous menu. Now, type 6 to create your EFI folder. OpenCore Simplify will automatically generate the EFI, including all the necessary texts, a CP, eye patches, drivers, and configuration files that match your hardware. Make sure you stay connected to the internet, because the program will need to download files during this step. After this process, you'll have a complete EFI folder ready to boot Mac OS on your PC or laptop. At this point, OpenCore Simplify may ask you to choose a text. If you see this prompt, just go with the default option. In my case, the default was number 17, so I typed 17 and pressed enter. 
After that, OpenCore Simplify will automatically start creating your EFI folder. Once it's finished, you'll have a complete EFI ready to boot Mac OS. Now we need to copy this EFI folder to the bootable USB drive that contains your Mac OS installer. To do that, I'll use Minitool Partition Wizard, I'm using version 10, free edition. Now install and launch Minitool Partition Wizard. Before we continue make sure you know the location of the EFI folder that you generated earlier with OpenCore Simplify. For easier access, I recommend copying the EFI folder to your desktop so it's ready to paste into the USB installer later. Now, open Minitool Partition Wizard again. Select the USB drive that contains your Make OS installer. Find the EFI partition inside the USB. Right-click and choose Delete Partition. Then right-click again and create a new partition. Name it EFI and set the file system to FAT32. Finally, click Apply in the upper left corner to confirm. And locate the EFI partition you created on your USB drive. Open the partition, then paste the EFI folder you generated earlier into it. Now your USB is fully prepared to boot Mac OS with the correct configuration. Next, we need to finalize the partition type. Still in Minitool Partition Wizard, right-click the EFI partition that now contains your EFI folder. Select Change Partition Type ID. Revert the partition back from FAT32 to an EFI system partition. Click Apply in the top right corner to confirm. Wait a few moments for the process to complete. Your USB installer is now ready, and you can use it to start installing Hackintosh Mac OS Sequoia or Tahoe on your PC or laptop. Now that your USB installer is ready, it's time to boot your PC or laptop into the Mac OS A installer. Restart your computer and enter the BIOS, or UEFI setup. Usually, this is done by pressing F2, F11, or F12 when your computer starts up. Then select your USB drive as the boot device. When OpenCore boots, you'll see the OpenCore Boot Picker menu. From here, select Install Mac OS. In my case, since I chose Mac OS Sequoia earlier, I'll select the Install Mac OS Sequoia option. If you chose Tahoe, you'll see Install Mac OS Tahoe, and the process will be the same. After a short while, you'll enter the Mac OS installer setup screen. From here, you can format your target disk and begin the installation. Once you're inside the Mac OS installer, the first thing you need to do is format your target disk so Mac OS can be installed properly. From the installer screen, open Disk Utility. Select the drive where you want to install Mac OS. Be careful this will erase all data on the selected drive. Click Erase and configure the following. Click Erase to confirm. Once it's done, close Disk Utility. Because I already have a partition for Mac OS, and it's only for upgrading so, I don't need to create a new partition. Back at the installer screen, select Install, Mac OS Sequoia, or Tahoe, depending on what you chose earlier. Select the newly formatted disk named Mac OS as the installation destination. The installation will begin, it may take 20 to 45 minutes depending on your hardware. Your computer will reboot several times. Each time, return to the OpenCore Boot Picker and keep selecting the Mac OS installer until the setup completes. After the final reboot, you'll be greeted by the Mac OS setup screen where you can create your account and finish the configuration. You've now successfully installed your Hackintosh to the latest Mac OS Sequoia or even the brand new Mac OS Tahoe. Now that macOS is installed successfully, the next step is to copy the EFI folder from your USB installer into your internal system drive's EFI partition. This way, your Hackintosh will boot directly without needing the USB. How to that?
And that's it. Don't forget to check the description below for all the download links, EFI examples, and additional resources. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.